All righty, with a pause for uh, technology out of hand, the worry, this is the worry solution, as I said. And um, here's the plan. I plan to talk to you for about 30 to 40 minutes max um, and go through this presentation about the worry solution. Um, I love to talk about this stuff. I love to talk about the mind-body connection, about how to reduce stress and why it's so good for you and uh, the many benefits of it. But I'll try to contain myself. And then we'll have 30 minutes or so. We'll go on till there aren't any more questions. It'll probably be about half an hour of answering your questions. And there is a question and answer function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And I'd like you to find that Q&A uh, button and uh, click it and maybe put in there where you're attending from, where you are right now. It'd be fun to see where people are, uh, are coming in from. There's a couple hundred people. And we want to see where you're at. And then also as you, um, now my Q&A button is up at the top of my screen. So it could be at the top, could be at the bottom. But uh, put in where you're coming, where you're attending from. People are doing that. Thank you very much. And that way you'll know where it is. You can uh, ans ask questions at any time. Uh, I'm going to be going through the presentation and then we'll go through the questions and we'll pick out the ones that we think are going to be of most uh, general interest and we'll take some time to discuss that okay so let me tell you a little bit about me and why we're focused on worry i'm a, a medical doctor i'm also an acupuncturist but i graduated from the university of michigan medical school in 1969 it's a million years ago I'm still practicing full-time um, in northern california and uh, when I graduated in 1969, we didn't even know about acupuncture or integrative medicine or holistic medicine or anything like that. But I had been involved to some degree in the civil rights movement in the 60s. And, and I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, a very racially divided city and had a lot of empathy, uh, didn't like racism and had a lot of empathy for uh, people who had affected badly. So I felt my mission when I graduated was I was going to bring good medicine to the underserved. And I came out to Oakland, California, across the bay from San Francisco, which is very much like Detroit demographically, but in a much nicer um, ge <laughs> geographic and weather area, um, and cultural area. And I trained at the county hospital there. And I worked part-time in the county medical clinic. I worked in a lot of the free medical clinics that were in the Bay Area. It's one of the reasons I came out to the Bay Area. Ran a couple of free clinics. Um, ended up doing a house call practice in Oakland. And the reason is, is because I wanted to see why it was so difficult to get my patients, who I loved and who loved me, to change their way of living and change their lifestyles and, you know, improve even 50 years ago, we knew that all the major chronic illnesses that we deal with now, the diabetes, the heart disease, the high blood pressure, the, the lung disease, the cancer, the liver disease, the uh, anxiety, the depression, and now the dementia, we know that all of those chronic diseases that um, are the bulk of any primary care or internal medicine practice are very influenced by how we eat, whether we move, what our relationships are like, how we manage stress, um, uh, yeah, substance use, and so on. And yet, it was so difficult to get my patients to change. And so every six weeks, they'd come in, I'd either give them a new medicine, or I'd take them off an old medicine and put them on a new medicine, take them off a new medicine. People would come in literally with shopping bags of medicines. And after a while, um, I got pretty burned out when I did my house call practice. I, I saw was people are just trying people are just trying to get through the day. They have tons of stress. I now live in a lovely area. Uh, people have, generally are pretty well off. Uh, the nature is beautiful. We have farmers markets. We have access to good food. 
It's a healthy lifestyle uh, area. And yet the big bugaboo now for us still is stress. And so people there in the city had stresses we don't have, poverty, lack of access to good food, crime, violence, drugs, all that kind of thing. We certainly have drugs and alcohol in, here in Northern California, but everybody's got a ton of stress. And um, I have devoted a lot of my career looking at how we create stress, how we reduce or eliminate stress, and what effects that has on our physical and mental health. Um, and that's, I'm going to share a lot of that with you. When I got interested in Chinese medicine and started studying uh, acupuncture also five decades ago, um, there's a medical textbook from Chinese medicine called the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine. It's the oldest medical textbook known on earth. And the Yellow Emperor's physician is talking to him about health and he's saying, the acupuncturist can help a lot of people. The herbalist can help a lot of people. The internal medicine doctor can help a lot of people. Um, but the only doctor, they call them the su superior physician, that can actually cure anything is the doctor who can teach people how to live in harmony with the seasons. Now, they were an agrarian culture, depending on the seasons for crops and food. And they watch the seasons very carefully. And they there are a lot of lessons in Chinese medicine about living with the seasons, the, the rising energy through the spring and summer, the reduction in energy in the fall and winter and paying attention to those things. But they also talk a great deal about the internal seasons, which are all of the emotions, the unresolved emotions and emotional stress. And for us, the season is always stress. And that's why I'm focusing on worry. Um, I'll make that a little bit clearer in just a bit. I'm not a big fan of scaring people in order to motivate them to do things that are good for them, although that's the main way we do it in medicine. And there's a simple reason for that. It's the only thing that even sometimes works. Um, and I don't want to scare you, but I do want to inform you how important stress is because stress is kind of invisible. And we, we sort of live in stress like fish live in water. We don't even notice it so much. Um, that, nine, that it's well known and widely published that 75 to 90% of all visits to primary care doctors are directly related to stress and anxiety. That's a huge number. In many ways, a lot of a primary care doctor's job is separating out what's anxiety and stress so we can address that and what requires some other kind of medical attention. It is the number one major risk factor for all the leading uh, chronic illnesses and fatal illnesses of the day, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, cancer, mental illness, dementia. It's by far the number one risk factor because it leads to the other risk factors, which I'll talk about in a moment. 30 million Americans have a diagnosable anxiety disorder and anxiety and stress are not exactly the same. I'll talk about that in a moment, but they're highly overlapping. And about twice that many, 60 million, have some kind of substance abuse problem. So that's 90 million. That's over one in three adults of Americans have either a diagnosable anxiety disorder or substance use abuse disorder. And the rest of us are pretty on edge too these days. So uh, there's a lot to be worried about. And I'm not gonna teach you either in this webinar or in the course to not worry because we need to worry. And I'll tell you why. Um, there's a lot to worry about. There's a, there are some real benefits to good worry, to effective worrying. The downside is what I call bad worry. And I'm gonna talk about how to deal with that too, deal with that. So there are the direct effects of stress. And we see people, we doctors see people all the time. They come in with a wide range, excuse me, of symptomatology from headaches, neck pain, back pain, 
irritable bowel syndrome, high blood pressure, heart disease, infertility, you know, insomnia, depression, problems in their relationships, all kinds of physical symptoms that are direct effects of a prolonged stress response in the body. And then there are the indirect effects, which comes from what I call toxic coping, because all the overeating, the sugar eating, the comfort food eating, the excessive alcohol drinking, the excessive use of, of cannabis, other drugs, cigarette smoking, I think the vast majority of that is because people are just trying to get a break. We're just trying to get through the day and get a break from this unrelenting feeling of stress or anxiety or worry, tension, nervousness, however it manifests in you. That's what I saw in my house call practice. These are good people under tremendous amounts of stress and just looking to get a break. And there's nothing wrong with it in the moral sense. Um, it's just that when, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a drink. I enjoy a drink. I having a gummy, having, you know, eating some comfort food, you know, having some, uh, some ice cream, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a pleasure. It does give you a break, but when it becomes a regular part of your lifestyle, and especially when it becomes much of your day, as many of these habits can become, the toxicity accumulates over time, and that causes all kinds of problems and illness. So if we're looking to get a break, I want to teach you some healthier ways to get a break so that you don't need to rely on toxic coping. Um, and that in itself is going to improve your health and your well-being. So why is it important to worry better? Why did I single out worry to write my worry solution book about, to teach classes about, and now to create an online course is pretty simple because worry is the easiest thing to do something about. I'm going to talk to you about worry, stress, and anxiety and how they overlap. Um, worry is the part of stress and anxiety that we can most easily access because it's a thinking function. We can be more conscious of it. The issue is, the reason I'm not going to even try to teach you not to worry is because we, your brain is wired to worry. Worry is an adaptive function. Worry helps us survive. And the number one function of the brain, the brain is a wonderful organ and the human mind is incredible in what it's created to some degree and also scary in terms of what it's created. Um, but everything is gravy once we're we're alive and the number one function of the human brain is to keep us alive the number one function of a brain in any living organism is to keep that organism alive and in order to do that it constantly scans for danger constantly scanning the environment and it's there are parts of the brain that are wired to notice things that are different things that are new things that are unusual it kind of gets lit up and if anything seems dangerous, then it lights up a lot more of the nervous system so that you can deal with that, that danger. Now, in the natural world where you're living on the African savanna or in the jungle, you know, there are certainly dangers and your senses are sharp and they're, but they're, it's nothing like the modern world where we get bad news piped into our, us if we leave the TV on or the radio or looking at our phones and social media all day, we're just getting danger, danger, danger. Uh oh, uh oh, watch out, pumped into our brains, you know, 24 seven. And we get overwhelmed and, uh, and burned out from that. So we have to learn how to use the brain, how to turn it off, how to shift its attention. And that's what we're going to talk about. The way you worry, people worry differently, is, is a learned response. And generally you learn from, we all worry, but the way you worry is learned. And you usually learn it from your family. Um, and, their, and your ancestors were warriors, otherwise you wouldn't have survived, actually. So what I want, the good news is that your brain is perfectly capable of learning some new skills and learning not only how to worry less, but how to worry better. And by better mean solving more problems rather than creating them. 
so worry, there's two main mental functions we're going to talk about. One is that worry is largely uh, connected to your imagination, the human imagination. Um, anticipates danger, solves problems. It's an amazing mental organ that lets us learn from the mistakes of other people, which is a much better idea than learning from your own mistakes. If you can, so if the hunting party went out this trail into the jungle, um, you know, in the, the jungle village and they never came back, uh, the other hunters are going to get together and think, hmm, maybe the next time we'll go out that path. We won't go out that path. Or if we go out that path, we're going to take a lot more men and we're going to take a lot more weapons and we're going to be super careful about it. So the, our imagination lets us think about things without having to directly experience it. And so it can anticipate the dangers. We can avoid some dangers and we can solve some problems in advance without having to try everything out and making every mistake. <clears throat> the human imagination is so much greater than any other animal we know. And it's one of the things that has allowed us to become, for better or worse, the dominant animal on the planet. Now, our ancestors were not the dominant animal. As a matter of fact, if you think about our ancestors on the plains of the savanna in Africa, they were not top predators. As a matter of fact, they weren't predators at all. They were prey. They were naked. Uh, they couldn't run very fast. They didn't have fangs. They didn't have claws. They couldn't fly. They couldn't swim very fast. So our ancestors hid out in the bushes and in caves and gathered together for strength. And the things that have made humans so powerful on the earth um, is one, our ability to communicate in the development of language, which requires an abstract level of thought and is involved with, has to do with imagination. The development of the opposable thumb, which allowed us to be more skillful in manipulating materials and tools. And the creative nature of the imagination. So think about it for a minute. You know, everything in our world, that wasn't created by nature started in somebody's imagination. It took a lot of work to get it into manifestation um, and to be a real thing. The skyscrapers, the spaceships, the submarines, the MRI machines that can look in your body, the computers that we're all using now, the smartphones, everything, the cappuccino machines, everything that nature didn't create started in somebody's imagination. That's a very powerful function. And hopefully we'll be able to continue to use it to solve some of the problems that we've created with our, with our imagination. But it's a very powerful function and it has very powerful functions directly on our body, directly in terms of stress, and also in terms of reducing or eliminating stress. The big question, one of the really, really big questions in mind-body medicine, in life itself, and in the things that, I'd be, that I'm teaching is, are you using your imagination in a skillful way, or is it running away with you? Is it just driving you crazy and making you sick? That is a huge question. We are going, I'm going to concentrate on teaching you skills that will let you use your imagination skillfully on, on purpose to reduce or eliminate unnecessary stress and worry and create a happier life. That's what this is about. Einstein said, the mind is a wonderful servant, but a terrible taskmaster. You can't let it run away with you. So you're going to learn to use your imagination to solve problems instead of creating them. And to create your best life. You know, you can think of your imagination as like a wild horse, like a strong, wild, spirited horse. Somebody gives you a gift of a wild horse. Well, if you train that horse, you befriend it, you learn how horses behave, um, and you train that horse, 
you know, in the pre-industrial age, it was a huge thing. It could plow your fields. It could take you uh, to towns and villages. It could take you hunting and fishing. It could be uh, expand your world a great deal. If you didn't train the horse, it could run over you and kill you in two seconds. So your imagination is a bit like that too. All right, so let's check the time. We're doing all right. I've been talking a lot. I want to take a little, maybe three minutes and invite you to do three very simple thought experiments with me. Uh, it'll be a little break and then we'll get back and talk about some other things. So these are just very simple. Uh, I'm going to ask you to think about some things. I'm going to ask you to notice whether it affects how you feel in your body. So take just a moment where you are and just kind of scan your mind through your body from top to bottom or bottom to top, kind of like a sonar beam. Just notice how your body feels right now and where it feels comfortable and relaxed, where it might feel tense or uncomfortable. It doesn't matter, just notice how it feels. And then in a moment, I'm going to say one simple word, and I'm going to ask you to repeat that word half a dozen times and kind of send it into your body. And notice if your body has any response to that word. And so the word is yes, 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 yes. Say it yourself, just say yes. Yes, kind of see it into your body, yes. And notice what it feels like. Notice if your body has any reaction to the word yes. And then here's a second word to try. See if it has any response to this. No, 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 no. Say no into your body. No, no. And just notice if your body has any response to that. It may or may not. No. Yes. 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 So just notice whether your body had any response to either of those. And let's and take a breath. And now second thought experiment. Imagine that your body is made of dry sticks of wood. It's made of sticks of wood, dry, stiff, hard. And then notice what happens if you imagine your body is made of wet, warm noodles. Wet, warm noodles, buttered, or olive oil. Is there any shift in your body when you imagine you're made of wet, warm noodles versus dry wooden sticks. And then as a third thought experiment, let yourself imagine that you go somewhere that's very beautiful to you. Some place you may have been in your life or a place that just comes to mind right now, but a very beautiful place to you, very peaceful and safe. And just imagine for a moment that you're there and notice what you imagine seeing in that place and what you imagine hearing or if it's very quiet and what the air is like, if there's an aroma, what the temperature is like. Just notice how you feel in your body being in a place like that or imagining yourself being in a place like that. And take a nice breath and let it out. And just let go of those images now. Take another breath. Fill your body with fresh, clean energy. Imagine that you release a little bit of tension or discomfort. Imagine that your brain is a little bit refreshed and we have a few other things to talk about. 
So I want to talk about how worry and stress and anxiety overlap a great deal, probably more than these circles. And they're completely interconnected and they tend to provoke each other. Worry tends to create stress and anxiety. Anxiety tends to create stress and worry. Stress can, tends to create the others. They're very intertwined, but they're different. I want to talk to you about how they're different and why I separated worry out as our target. So to start with, this is the uh, this is an old model of the brain. It's called the triune brain. It was named that by or three part brain by Norman McLean, a prominent psychiatrist. Uh, the McLean Hospital at Harvard Medical School is named after him, and he talked about how the brain developed uh, from the bottom up. Uh, that first we shared this small brain at the top of the spinal cord. This leads down the spinal cord to your body. And this is what we call the lizard brain or the reptilian brain or the brain stem. And it developed a little no bump on the top full of nerve cells. We share that with the lizard. And the lizard brain is very simple. It doesn't do a lot of, it doesn't worry. It doesn't do a lot of anticipation. It doesn't do any thinking, but it's very alert to danger. The lizard brain is basically concerned with three things. We all have this lizard brain inside. It's concerned with, is that something I can eat? Or is that something that can eat me? Or is that something I can mate with? That's basically what the lizard brain is concerned with. And it's on the lookout for those things at all time. And like a lizard that you come across on a path and, and your shadow goes over it and boom, it's gone in a second. It reacts very quickly very strongly it either approaches things or runs away with things it's relatively simple as a brain goes and on top of that we developed a more complex uh, area called the limbic system it's sometimes called the emotional brain uh, and in this uh, conglomeration of neurons and additional patterning of neurons a bigger we share that with with many mammals and other animals that have social relations. The emotions help us in social relations when we understand them and know how to use them well. Think about other primates like chimpanzees. You know, if they get mad, they express it directly. They make a lot of space around them. If they're sad and they have a loss, the other members of the, of the tribe come and comfort them. If they're afraid, they gather together. If they're happy, they vocalize and they have a party. Limbic system allows us to have relationships, wolf packs, you know, lion prides, and so on and so forth. A little more complex, largely emotional, not very abstract, not very uh, creative or imaginative. But it adds another layer of complexity and another layer of abilities in the brain. And then humans, along with other primates uh, and other mammals, have developed this part of the brain. We're very proud of the cortex or the neocortex. It's the largest part of the brain. Our thinking cap all covered with wrinkles and wriggles. <clears throat> and this is where we, this has allowed us to do abstract thinking. And this is where the imagination lives. This is where language lives. This is where mathematics develops. This is where imagery happens, okay? And adds new complexity, new abilities. What, the more layers of the brain, as we got more complex, one of the abilities, unfortunately, that we also have is the ability to be conflicted with, the, with ourselves because we can feel like we ought to do this thing, but we can think that we should do the other thing and we can be conflicted like that. And so problem-solving skills and uh, enhancing our problem solving and our conflict resolution skills within ourselves is a tremendous stress reducer. And the guided imagery techniques that I will teach you um, in the worry solution are very helpful for that. So let's split out worry. And so you can see why, I, why worry is the focus. Little Ziggy says to his shrink, the figments of my imagination are out to get me. And unfortunately, this is the default position of the imagination. If we let the imagination run wild, it's going to scare us. We're going to be scared and worried and imagine the worst and go to the worst conclusions because that's its job to keep us alive, right? 
So we have to know how to interact with it and use it and uh, turn it off at times and shift attention at times and use it in more positive ways. So worry lives in that cortex, that thinking cap part of the brain. And as I said before, good worry is adaptive. It resolves problems in advance. It lets us work things out without having to go through them. If any of you have remodeled anything in your house, like your kitchen, you know that the more you think about it and plan in advance, the more you visualize it and create it in your mind, the faster the job will go and the cheaper it will be, as opposed to, well, let's just try this and let's try that and let's try this. And I don't know what color I want. And I don't know what kind of door pulls I want. You're gonna keep your contractor on the job four times as long and it's gonna cost you a lot of money and they might even walk out on you. So good worry, that's a type of good worry. Planning, visualization can save you lots of time, money, and stress. Bad worry, we're going to concentrate on in the worry solution and teach you a method to eliminate or resolve this. This is just worrying about things you can't do anything about, no matter how badly you want, going over and over and over and over it, basically showing yourself movies of all the things you don't want to have happen and hypnotizing yourself and causing yourself to feel anxious and depressed when there might be other options. And that kind of worry can become habitual, can become unconscious, can make it hard to live with you for yourself and others, and it can really erode your mood. And that's why we're going to address that early on in the course. The big deal about that is it's learned behavior and you can learn to deal with it better. Now, anxiety is more of a feeling state. It lives in that feeling brain, the limbic part of the brain, the middle part, that's where the neurons are that, that are the substrate for that feeling. It's an incredibly uncomfortable feeling. Anxiety, <clears throat> sheer of outright pain, is probably the most uncomfortable feeling you can have. It's often in the gut or the chest or the upper part of the body. There's a feeling of fear, of apprehension, of dread. People often describe anxiety, especially if they have panic attacks, as a feeling of impending doom. Something is going to happen. That's a terrible, uncomfortable feeling. And it comes with a lot of physical symptoms because your autonomic nervous system is involved. Rapid heartbeat, high blood pressure, sweating, shortness of breath, chest pain, back pain, palpitations, all kinds of um, you know, upset stomach all kinds of physical symptoms. And the thing about anxiety, a little bit of anxiety kind of puts us on, on alert and can get us ready, kind of like a horse uh, racehorse at the starting gate. But when anxiety gets to be too strong, it actually interferes with our ability to think logically and solve problems. So learning how to modulate, turn the gain down, turn the amplification down on anxiety, incredibly important and useful life skill. And we'll be concentrating on that in the worry solution. Now, stress is the physical response that we have to danger. You've heard of the fight or flight response. It's built into our nervous system. It lives in that reptile brain. Once it's triggered, it's gone. Once the brain sends a signal, danger, 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 it triggers this fight or flight response. The body sends more blood to the big muscles. This is where you hear of a woman moving a car to get it off of a baby. You hear about people doing incredible physical um, feats that are thought to be impossible because you're supercharged. Your brain sends out sends a message to your adrenal glands. Your senses are heightened. You get a rush of adrenaline. Adrenaline makes your heart beat faster and your blood pressure go up your blood clots faster. This is all to prepare you to survive a battle. This is, you know, usually we say this is when the caveman walks out and runs into the saber-toothed tiger. Boom, fight or flight response goes off. His blood goes to his muscles, his senses are heightened. He's got adrenaline on board. He either runs the fastest two minute mile he's ever run, climbs the highest tree, or somehow he fights and kills the tiger. One way or another, this response is over in about 20 minutes. You've either been the tiger's lunch and you don't have to worry about it anymore, or you've escaped or you've killed the tiger. And now you 
crawl back to the cave and you sit around the fire at night and you tell everybody how you survived the tiger and how you killed it. And you tell that story night after night for the rest of your life or until they kick you out of the cave. Um, but what happens is now the big fight or flight response is over and your body automatically would settle back into a re relaxation response where it recharges and renews itself and, and gets ready to go. In modern life, this often doesn't happen because we are often dealing with, not with saber-toothed tigers, but with worries. Do I have enough money? Will I be able to retire? Can I send the kids to college? Do will I have a place to live? What's going to happen with the environment? What's going to happen with democracy? What's going to, I don't have to go through all of this with you. There's a lot to worry about. And again, we can have it pumped into us 24 seven. The second thing worry is a function of is attention. Now attention, where you put your attention, may be the most valuable thing you've got in some way. When you think about it, everybody wants your attention. Your kids want your attention, your spouse wants your attention, your friends want your attention, um, media wants your attention, advertisers want your attention. You know, they pay billions of dollars to for 10 seconds of a Super Bowl ad to get the attention of 2 billion people. So attention's really important. It may be as close as we come to what consciousness is, what you're attending to. Um, and your attention can get captured by worry. And the media knows that. But your attention can also be focused and directed by you. And a lot of what we're going to talk about and teach exercises and practices in the worry solution is how to take back ownership of your attention, how to direct it, how to shift it, what to shift it to that gives you a better response, a better function than, or a better life than you've got. So what grabs your attention? Fear. You're in danger. Like I said, brain's number one function, keep you alive. The brain is obligated to pay attention to things that are scary. Obligated, number one. Um, the media knows this. That's why most news is scary. Every scary thing that could happen because your brain has to pay attention to it. It's built in. And, um, you know, they've been saying for 150 years, fear sells newspapers. Now it sells TV and it sells social media. And the second thing your brain, second most important function of your brain, once it's kept you alive, is to procreate and reproduce the species. So sex is the second thing that gets your attention. So if your news isn't scary, it's sexy. If the ads aren't scary, you know, they're sexy. And they have attractive people and they have things that attract your brain one way or the other to grab your eyes. Andrew Weil calls a lot of the media junk food for the mind, I agree. And the important thing to know is there's an off button on your TV, off button on your remote, off button on your phone, off button on your computer. And there's a way to turn off your mind and there's a way to shift your attention. And that's why we need to learn to worry well. So, in the Worry Solution course, you're going to learn a practical way to actually quickly shift from anxious and stressed to relatively calm and relaxed. You're going to learn to calm down that nervous system. You're going to learn how to identify exactly what you're worried about, get them out in the open and sort them into things you can do something about and not. And I'm going to teach specific ways to deal with that. The good worry that you can do something about, I'm going to, we're going to have a lesson a really interesting lesson on creating effective action and another lesson on uh, eliminating bad worries. Because, and I think this is one of the most brilliant things I've seen from Ashley Brilliant, who makes these little cute postcards, but I think it's incredibly brilliant. Due to circumstances beyond our control, we are masters of our fate and captains of our soul. So, the Worry Solution, there's a book and audio set, and now the online course. Last thing I'll say, and then we'll take questions. The What we've added to the online course on top of the book and the audios that you have 
is six self-paced online video lessons with me teaching you what's in that lesson, um, all the guided imageries, the book to back you up, a journal to keep pace and to, to guide you through the processes. So this is really for those of you who really are serious about wanting to change how much you worry, how you worry, how much stress you create, eliminate unnecessary stress, learn how to use your mind and your imagination to create strengths, to find and, and create strengths, to connect with your inner wisdom, to creatively solve problems that you haven't been able to solve, and to be able to let go and come to peace with problems that you can't solve and you can't do away with. There's three options in this course. There's what we call the essentials course, where you get all the video lessons, all the guided imagery, the book and the journal, and you download that right away and take that at your own pace. Then we have a community option for those of you who learn best in community and want to take some more time where we release one lesson. There's six lessons, one lesson every two weeks. You download the video, you watch it, you work in the journal, you listen to the guided imageries, you work with the process. You know, this is work. This is not, it's, there's magic to it, but there's work to it as well. And, uh, and then in the weekend between the lessons, you meet with me for an hour and your fellow students, and we have a session like this where we talk and answer your questions and share experiences, and we learn from each other even better how to deal with that way of reducing stress and worry. And then there's an option, a VIP option for those of you who work best individually. You get all of the community course, and you get two one-hour coaching sessions with me one-on-one -on -one via Zoom. So um, I'm going to stop soon. The last thing I'm going to say is uh, once the webinar ends, um, you'll be getting, uh, we'll be sending this to you, the recording of the webinar. You'll have 24 hours to enroll in the early and get the early bird tuition, which is significantly less than the uh, regular tuition. After that, you'll still be able to enroll in any course, but it's going to cost you a bit more. So if, um, and the other thing is you have a 90 day money back guarantee, no questions asked. If this doesn't work for you, I want you to give it a try. I wanna make it easy for you because this works. I've taught this to lots and lots of people. Um, I want you to give it a try. And if it's not for you for any reason, and it doesn't help you reduce your stress and, and be having more fun and enjoyment of your life, let us know, we'll send you all your money back. Um, and we'll let you keep the book and the uh, and the guided imagery as well. So you've really got nothing to lose. If you're feeling overstressed, feeling overwhelmed by it, if it's a good time for you to learn these new skills, please join us. Let me teach you what I've learned, what I've taught to tens of thousands of people, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to end the presentation and we're going to start looking at the question and answer box. So if you have questions, uh, hit the Q&A box. I'll give you a, a minute or so and then we'll start answering questions. Let's see, stop sharing. Okay, people are starting to put questions in there. I'm going to give you a minute or so. And A lot of I see a lot of people that I know. Hi, welcome. You know who you are. Uh, here's a question: Do you get to keep the six lesson video course forever? Or is there a time limit to using it? That's it's yours forever. Um, yeah, it's downloadable. You download it. It's on your device, and it belongs to you.
So it looks like most people, at least who are in the box, are a lot are in the Western US and we've got a couple the people that are helping me administratively and technologically or many are in the Ukraine. And so our hearts go out to them and good wishes. Uh, here's a question. Do you guarantee that it will work to cope with stress? Well, I guarantee it in this, you know, I can't guarantee it because I don't know who you are. I guarantee uh, that if you work with it and it doesn't help you cope with stress, then let us know and I'll be sorry that it didn't, but we'll give you your money back. Uh, that's the guarantee. We'll give you all your money back. We'll give you 90 days to work with it. Um, of course, if you uh, have it for 90 days and you don't open it, it probably won't help you work. It, you know, you need to do the lessons and think about it and try the exercises and practice for it. If you do that, it will help you with your stress. There's no doubt about it. And if for some reason, any reason at all, it's just not worth it to you, then we'll send you your money back. Um, how does the self-pacing work if the lessons are released? So that's a good question. So there's two options. The first option is what's called the essentials course. The essentials course, you can get everything all at once, whenever you want it. And, you know, you could work, you could work through the course in a few days or in a week uh, or as fast as you go through it. Now, I will say that that's, you know, or you could do it in two weeks or three weeks or something like that. It's a very good way to do it if you're a fast learner. Um, there's a couple of parts, you know, the intellectual part of the course, the which the book gives you and which the video lectures are about. The lectures are about why this makes sense and how it works and some cases of people, you know, using it and successfully. So those are things for your rational mind to satisfy your rational mind to let it know that it might be worth letting go and doing some other practices. They're not exactly irrational practices, but they're not intellectual practices, the breathing, the body relaxation, the guided imagery that takes you to a healing place, the process by which you turn bad worry on its head, the process by which you learn how to effectively create problem-solving plans, the guided imagery process by which you connect with a source of wisdom inside you, which is very, very powerful, the guided imagery process by in which you connect with creativity or other strengths that you want to strengthen. Those are, those talk not only to the rational mind, but also to the emotional part of the brain. And that's one of the powers of imagery is that it's kind of a Rosetta Stone that speaks to both the, the language part of the brain and the feeling part of the brain. And so it's a, it's a language that both the body and mind can learn to understand. So those take a little bit of time, just like that's, uh, you know, time is one of the things that's kind of the difference between being smart and being wise. So I've been a smart and clever guy my whole life. And I'm lucky for that. I'm thankful for that. But it's only as you get older, and I don't I don't have a whole lot of wisdom right now, but I have more than I used to have. And part of what's different about wisdom than intelligent than being clever or quick or smart. So wisdom comes a little more slowly. Wisdom brings a bigger picture. Wisdom develops more like a photograph. There's even brain research now that postulates that it's the pruning of brain cells as we get older. You know, as we get older, we all worry. I'm losing my brain cells, you know, and I don't remember things as well. And I'm not as quick as I used to be. But there's research that shows that pruning those brain cells, leaving more room between them, is actually where wisdom comes up because wisdom deals with bigger issues, not the quick little minutia. So I think in some ways that's related to the pacing. If you're a real fast learner, 
and you want to like read the book in two hours and race through all six lessons and not do the exercises, you'll learn some really valuable things, but it won't help you near as much as if you say, I'm going to take a week or two with, I'm going to take a week with this cultivating calmness lesson. And I'm going to practice that technique and I'm going to do it four or five times or 10 times this week. And I'm going to see how it develops and see if what Dr. Rossman says is really true for me. And, and then I'm going to come and we'll talk about it. I can ask my questions and share my experiences. And if I run into a roadblock, I can ask that. So there's really, there's an advantage in slowing it down. Um, and I say that as somebody who loves to binge watch some of these things, series that are on, you know, Netflix and Amazon Prime that my wife and I were watching one last night. We went, oh, we have to wait a whole week for this? Why don't they give us the whole thing at once? We're used to this binge watching, binge eating, binge everything, do it faster, faster, faster. <clears throat> a lot of reducing stress is no, do it a little more slowly. Go for a little more depth, uh, but that's up to you. So <clears throat> if you want to go through it quickly, do the essentials. If you want to really let this settle in, you know, kind of like watering the garden. You, you know, if you just pour all the water on it at once, it's not as effective as kind of gently watering it for a while and letting the water seep down into the ground and getting to the roots. So your choice. Um, you know, I think even if, if you signed up for the, you, you'll get all the uh, the guided imagery, but um, we release the courses in the, in the community every two weeks. Uh, somebody asked, what do you do if you already have the book and the guided imageries? Give it to a friend or a family member. I guess it's included in the in the uh, in the price. I guess you could sell it on eBay. I don't know if that's worth it. I don't really know, but we're going to send you the book, and I, the guided imageries will be uh, downloaded. But if you do, then um, if you enroll for the course, what it will add to the course are the video lectures. <clears throat> which, you know, all the information is there in the book and the guided imagery, but it depends on how you learn. The reason that I bothered to make a multimedia course, some people learn better by listening and seeing and by lectures. So this has another dimension. And, um, you know, I would encourage you to pay it forward and share it with somebody um, who could use it. Um, good, this person who was asking if I can guarantee it uh, is going to join right away. Welcome. I really, you know, I didn't put all this time into these things uh, because I have nothing to do. I'll guarantee you that. Um, I have a family. I have a full-time practice of um, I do a fair amount of writing. I do a fair amount of lecturing. I I really see it as my mission is to teach people how to use their minds better, more on purpose, more consciously, to improve their lives and improve their health. And I've learned a lot about it. Uh, I wish I knew more about it, and I'm continually learning. But um, this is why with a partner, I founded a postgraduate training academy in the 1990s and 2000s. We we had 10,000 health professionals in our workshop. We did a 150 hour certification training for a thousand health professionals, medical doctors, nurses, psychotherapists, pastoral counselors <clears throat> to teach them how to work with mind body medicine and work with guided imagery. It's very, very powerful. And nobody ever taught us how to do this. Nobody, you know, even when in my day, my, as my daughter says, I still say, this is still my day, but I know what she means. When I was young, you know, the education was reading, writing, and arithmetic, and uh, it's different now. Most of it is trying to keep the class behaved. 
but uh, it wasn't how to use your imagination. It was like, stop daydreaming and stop looking out the window. So very, very few people, in spite of the human imagination being uh, literally one of the most powerful forces on the face of the earth, very few people have ever had any real education or training in how to use the imagination. And so some of this is, is remedial, but it's powerful. It's transformative. Uh, when people learn, even learn that they can use their mind to get their tension level down from a six out of 10 to a four out of 10, just that difference makes a huge difference. If you get it down to a two out of 10, or you start experiencing times when you don't have it at all, and then you start experiencing creative ideas and ways to deal with issues or problems or people that you couldn't even imagine before, you start to feel like a different person. You start to feel more like, I can be a bit more in the driver's seat of my life. I'm not at the mercy of everybody else and my worried mind. Uh, I can I can get in control. It's like having a, you know, it's like having a barking dog. You gotta get that dog under control. You have to get trained. You have to get the dog trained. It's mostly the people that need to get trained of how to interact with a dog. The same is true with your mind. If you've got a barking dog for a worried mind, um, for, you know, the neighbors can hear it as you're constantly talking about your worries. Uh, you want to get that, you want to train it. You want to calm it down. You want to have it feel safer. You want to have it feel more at ease. And then the rest of your mind, you can start working better too. So I'm on a mission. Um, you know, I'm 77 years old. I'm still looking for other ways to get this across to people because it's life-changing. It is so valuable. Um, and that's why I'm here. And I guess that's why you're here too. So take advantage of it. Um, <clears throat> a woman says, seems like this is not for those who want a quick fix or solution. You have to put in the time and attention. I'm sorry. That's true. Uh, there are some things that can work very quickly. Uh, uh, the positive worry imagery is one <clears throat> that can work instantaneously. I, I teach that to people with cancer diagnoses and difficult medical diagnoses. I teach it to them in 10 minutes, and then they have a 20-minute guided imagery that you listen to, and that's something that you can learn uh, very quickly, but then you need to use it. So, but you can learn it very quickly. The same is true even with the deep relaxation. It's easy to learn. Uh, it's not challenging to learn, but it's a, it's not just an intellectual thing. It's a mind body practice. So you have to wait for your body and you want to let your body settle into that deep relaxation and feel the benefit of doing that as opposed to thinking you know you don't go i'm relaxing my foot my calf my knees my back my my waistline my shoulders my knees my brain now i'm relaxed no you're not you have to I'm thinking about my feet i'm inviting my feet to relax i'm breathing easily i'm noticing what my feet feel like as they start to relax now i'm thinking about my lower legs I'm noticing what they feel like. I'm inviting them to relax. I'm letting them relax in their own way. Noticing what that feels like. And so we go through your body. So that takes 10, 11 minutes. I mean, we're not talking about decades or centuries here. We're not even talking about years. But we are probably talking about, we're talking about practicing and getting better. So, yeah, you the more time, it's one of those things, you know, I always used to hate to hear when I would take a class and the instructor would say, well, you'll get out of this what you put into it. And I used to hate hearing that because <laughs> I just wanted it to be easy and spoon feed me and let me have it and let me get out of here. <clears throat> so when I figure out how to do that, I'll be sure to do another uh, 10 minute online course and send it out. 
um, but it's not there. But we're talking about put 20, 25 minutes into a relaxation technique. <clears throat> Notice how you feel. You'll probably feel somewhat more relaxed. If you do it every day for a week, you'll start to feel considerably more relaxed. And then the thing is, along with the feeling of relaxation, and that's not the whole course, that's just one lesson in the course, <clears throat> but interesting things start to happen. For instance, let's take that example, when people start to learn that they can physically and mentally relax, what it also plays into, people feel more competent, they feel more in charge of themselves, they feel more, there's a term in medical research called self-efficacy. And it's correlated when people feel <clears throat> more self-efficacy, they have far fewer medical problems. They do courses to teach people, when they teach people relaxation techniques like this, they measure self-efficacy. They find that people's self-efficacy, their feeling that they can do something about the situation increases. Those people go to the doctor 43% fewer times over the next year. And it's because you feel more confident in your ability to navigate through what life brings you. So it's not only that you're physically more relaxed during that time. As you practice and make it a habit, you generally start to feel more relaxed. And without even knowing it, you just start to feel like there's something I can do. I'm more in control. You know, one of the things people say when I talk to them about relaxation, deep relaxation is, I don't like to be out of control. I can't relax because I don't like to be out of control. And what I say for them, what I say to them is, respectfully, <clears throat> how much control do you have if you can't even relax your own body? I mean, that's pretty close to having no control. So having control doesn't mean being uptight. Um, it means being able to be as tense or relaxed as is appropriate to the situation. So that's what that's about. The same lady says, I used your cancer program, which is a book and, and CD set. I made that as a home study program and it was life changing. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm so glad that's, that's why I do them. Uh, you know, as a doctor, and I've had a full-time practice for 50 years. So I don't know how many patients I've seen. Uh, maybe I've calculated and I just forget, it may be 10,000. So I'm happy. And out of those 10,000, <clears> many of them I've been able to help one way or the other. But the reason that I write, the reason I create courses, the reason I had a postgraduate training institute I know the thousand therapists that I train, uh, they've also seen 10,000 people each. So that's 100,000 people. And the 10,000 people, therapists we had in our workshops, maybe there's a couple hundred thousand more people. And the books are, you know, if this gets out to people, I can reach more people. <clears throat> this is relatively simple stuff. It's stuff we were just never taught. We were kind of taught to be uptight. And to always be tense and always be focused and and uh, we we weren't taught well how to manage stress. Most people are not. Somebody else says, "What's different from this course?" Oh, and the worry solution book and CD guided experience on the website. As I said before, this is an addition to that. This is for people who who uh, learn better by listening auditory listeners, even visual listeners, so that the video lectures add to what, it's the same material, not word for word. In the lectures, I can talk about the concepts in a different way. So this gives you three chances, it gives you video lectures, <clears throat> written lessons, guided imagery lessons, and a journaling method. So it's multimedia. And people are used to watching TV now very, more, more and more people don't read for information. They watch YouTube videos. Um, and there's a, so much great information in, in, on YouTube videos. You know, you can learn anything from YouTube videos. So we have YouTube videos. Go to my YouTube channel and check it out. 
Um, but it's the same information, but in a more expanded way because of the video lessons. And then if you opt for the community option, that's a unique opportunity to then be in a community of people who are learning at the same time and meeting with me six times over 12 weeks to discuss how the learning's going and problems you run into or obstacles or or uh, triumphs that you've had and to support each other in really learning this down to the bones, really deepening this and really changing your, your life. So that's the difference between them. So uh, where are we? We're, I think, um, if you have another question, uh, put it in now, because I think we're about to wrap it up. Remember, you've got 24 hours from when this ends in a couple of minutes to take advantage of the early bird uh, tuition, which is significantly less than the regular tuition. And uh, I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll join us in the community group because that's going to be something a new uh, a new thing to add to the course and we can get to know each other over the 12 weeks and uh, learn together and uh, I think I'll probably learn some things that will improve the course and you'll learn some things that will um, I'm really quite sure improve your life so thanks for listening um, we'll be kind of hitting you with a couple of reminders in the next 24 hours uh, to click that button and enroll for the course and give it a try. 90 days, money back, keep the book and the audio guided imageries. And I think uh, we never do get many refunds. I've probably, I started making these online courses when COVID hit because my practice was closed for a few months. So I learned a bit about how to do this. So I've probably... Um, people have probably bought about 400 online courses now, had one refund, one request for refund. So those other online courses deal with, uh, there's one on a whole course on cultivating calmness. There's one on using your brain to relieve pain. There's one on uh, the mind, the mind body uh, road to weight loss. And I hope to be making more. And so, you know, we're have, if you want your money back, we don't ask questions. We were interested in why we learn from that, but we don't judge. We'll give you your money back because we know we're probably not going to have to because people are happy with these courses. So all best to you. I'm signing off for Dr. Marty Rossman for The Healing Mind.